Hello, this is John Canalopoulos from our office in Athens, Greece here. Thanks so much for watching this. We want to share with you some data that we have on an interesting glaucoma patient. This gentleman I saw for the first time yesterday, 67-year-old male with past ocular history of the last two years being diagnosed with glaucoma. Uh, he is using uh, a prostaglandin uh, once a day in both eyes these last two years, which uh, actually has also changed the color of his iris from green to light brown. We're gonna see that in a little bit. Um, he had a past incident uh, 15 years ago of a transient diplopia that was never evaluated uh, carefully. Uh, medical history of um, hypertension and also status post coronary um, stents. He's a cardiac disease uh, patient and receives um, antiplatelet medication uh, daily. No other significant uh, medical history besides uh, hypercholesterolemia. His acuity uncorrected was uh, 2030 and 2040. Uh, best corrected uh, 2020 plus and 2020 ODOS respectively is refraction plus 0.75 minus 0.25 at 124 minus one and a half minus one at 67 degrees. His cornea uh, uh, thickness is uh, 530 microns and his uh, intraocular pressures were 12 millimeters of mercury yesterday measured at uh, 430 p.m. We remeasured him at eight o'clock uh, and pressures were 10 millimeters of mercury in both eyes. Um, and uh, as noted, there is no correction to be made um, to these actual measurements due to cornea thickness. Now, the interesting thing here is that I wanna focus on the left eye. We have the uh, very nice images of the uh, optic nerve on the left eye here. And we can see that we can identify the actual rim. I wanna stay with the supratemporal and the supranasal aspect carefully. We can see that he has a very deep cup and the cupping is about 0.5 um, cup this ratio. Uh, good vasculature, one may say there's some nasal uh, movement of the vessels, um, but also uh, we can clearly see that the rim uh, appears to be normal in this eye. The left, uh, the right eye is slightly tilted, as you can see here, supero, uh, temporally, uh, but also the rim here has identified relatively thick and homogeneous. Um, we do have some AV nicking here, signs of uh, vasculopathy, most likely hypertensive um, uh, retinopathy and maybe exaggerated by his vascular disease manifested from the uh, coronary stents. Now, um, he's open angle uh, and uh, on looking at the uh, ONH, on the left eye that we saw before, uh, we can see that there's clear evidence of um, uh, supratemporal uh, and um, diving of his uh, ONH line. Uh, and this area here is irregular. It's flagged here both uh, supratemporal and supranasal as a regular borderline in the uh, oblique supranasal and supratemporal. But if we go back to look at the optic nerve, this does not comply with the appearance of the optic nerve. So this, in my opinion, uh, does not depict glaucoma. This is a different process. Uh, we're gonna look the, uh, the same numbers on the right eye. Uh, let's move uh, the picture a little bit higher. You can see here that again, his ONH line dives in the supertemporal and supernasal meridian. They're flagged here as being irregular. Um, uh, the whole uh, nasal side and the inferior side is borderline. But if we look at the nerve, as I mentioned before, this clearly healthy rim all the way around, uh, superiorly and uh, temporally, and of course, nasally. So let's look at the ganglion cell um, uh, image. If we look at these images, we can clearly see an altitudinal um, defect here, which complies with the fact that patient complains of having difficulty in stairs um, when he's uh, moving downwards mainly. Thus, uh, and we can also see on these images that he has an impending vitreous detachment, both on the right eye and the left eye with some very, uh, with actually none, uh, no uh, macular traction. So let's go back uh, to look at the optic nerves. Uh, in my opinion here, we're not dealing with glaucoma. His uh, pressures without medications were in the 15 millimeter mercury um, 
uh, neighborhood and uh, this patient is a vascular patient what we're seeing here is probably partial ischemic optic neuropathies uh, performed uh, um, that took place in the past as part of his vascular disease so i think that um, treating him with uh, anti-glaucoma medications especially prostaglandins is not going to offer this patient anything we'll work closely with his cardiologist to make sure that his uh, thrombophilia and his vascular disease that not does not cause any more significant problems. We can clearly see here that his uh, vein to artery ratio is increased uh, significantly. It should be three to two. It's almost two to one, if not three to one. And um, let's look at the color of the iris if we can. We can also see how the iris of this patient now is, is light brown. He used to have green eyes. And of course, he has mild cataracts as well that we need to address. So I think uh, we picked a case here that's quite interesting and in where um, uh, OCT imaging of the optic nerve in lieu of the uh, optic nerve head analysis and looking at the uh, nerve fiber layer in the perimetry around the optic nerve can help us uh, find this dissociation between the um, appearance of the uh, neurons that come out of the optic nerve and the actual appearance of the optic nerve and help us uh, make this diagnosis. We also asked him if he was significant, significantly hypotensive in his younger years, and he mentioned he had uh, lower blood pressure, but he had never fainted. He was running uh, 11 over 7, which is nothing remarkable. And uh, uh, again, uh, in my opinion, this is a, a vascular patient with findings of probably a silent uh, AION that he had uh, uh, suffered in the past uh, that has now been labeled as a glaucoma patient treating his hypertension and his vascular disease is imperative and this is where we as um, uh, eye surgeons can work closely with his uh, uh, cardiologist to better serve uh, this patient's overall uh, status. Uh, thank you very much for watching this case and I hope you enjoyed our uh, discussion.